Just about 649, your top news this Monday in our Sunrise Smart Star from here from News 8. Community leaders are looking for your input today for how to make some meaningful change with curbing gun violence in Rochester. This latest call for action comes as the city remains under a gun violence state of emergency order that's been in place for more than a year going back to last summer. At City Hall tonight, there will be a hybrid meeting allowing multiple ways to join in. You can be there in person, you can be at home from Zoom or on the city's YouTube page weighing in. Council member and chair of the Rock Against Gun Violence Coalition, Willie Lightfoot, tells us this is not just meant to be another talk about crime and gun violence, but a stepping stone for the future. We want to exhaust people's solutions. We do not want to talk about the problem. We already know what that is. We want to talk about solutions. And then at the end of these two sessions, the 14th and the 21st, we're going to prioritize those solutions, categorize them, prioritize them, put them in a plan, and we're going to submit this plan to this community uh, by October. The Rock Against Gun Violence Coalition will be there at City Hall tonight at 6, beginning in Council Chambers on the third floor. Again, you can be there in person or you can call the city today for more info on joining that Zoom meeting to have a comment. Today, Ian e. Millam is due in court for what is scheduled as a detention hearing. The 37-year-old Spencer Port teacher is charged with production and possession of child porn. Millam is a sixth grade math teacher from Cosgrove Middle School. Prosecutors say Millam posed as a student, a high school classmate on Snapchat, contacting two minors on social media. Media. If convicted on the charges, they carry a minimum of 15 years in prison. Monroe County deputies are investigating a motorcycle crash on the expressways. This bike could be seen off an embankment on 490 eastbound near the Pittsford Palmyra exit. That's exit 26. We have reached out to authorities for more updates on injuries, how severe. We did see the motorcycle getting towed from that scene. Erie County officials say they are no longer accepting new asylum seekers. That decision follows a second case of alleged sexual assault at a hotel housing these families. An asylum seeker from the Democratic Republic of the Congo stands accused of sexually abusing a woman and trying to trap her. The claims from Friday. The woman was working at a Chictawaga hotel. County Executive Mark Polencar says in an effort to increase safety and security, the National Guard will be dispatched to the hotel property, providing an additional presence of security. He adds he talked about a new plan with New York City Mayor Eric Adams as DotGo, the third party company hired to run the hotel operation, may have interfered with the police investigation into the alleged sex assault. Monroe County is still expecting to welcome more migrants over the next couple of weeks. 651 sunrise traffic here early on this Monday morning, our first new work day of the week. Of course, things okay on the roads. We haven't seen any crashes on 395, 94, 90. Keep you updated if that changes. If you're hanging out at home for a little bit longer, we will check sunrise traffic again at about 725 during CBS mornings. The governor of Hawaii says at least 93 people are confirmed to have been killed in the deadly fires on Maui. That number is only expected to keep rising with hundreds more still missing. Search and rescue teams this morning are going door to door in Lahaina. Officials there estimate the repairs could cost more than $5 billion. This is being called the largest national disaster in the state's history. The state attorney general has announced an investigation in the decision making leading up to during and after the fires over the last week. Many families for that say they were not told to evacuate until it was simply too late. As Maui struggles with all the devastation, it faces a staggering economic toll as well. Tourism accounts for nearly 80% of the income of the island. Lahaina was once a magnet for tourists, the economic lifeblood of this once thriving town, and it now sits in ruins. There's no real jobs around anymore, <laughs> um, you know, around in town or anything. And I see the bakery where I worked is burned down. Everyone who came here it was their happy place, and now everything we knew can't go to the gelato shop anymore, can't go to the ABC stores, can't go to the bars we used to go to. Such a big sense of community, and although we still have that sense of community, it's not going to be the same for a while. During the first half of this year, Maui had nearly one and a half million visitors, a third of all tourists to Hawaii. They spent three and a half billion dollars there on their trips. Our station's parent company, Nexstar, is joining the efforts to support raising money to help the victims of the fires in Hawaii. Our sister station, KHON in Honolulu, is teaming up with the American Red Cross to host a Malama Maui telethon today. That's from 11 a.m. until 4 to take part 
No gift is too small. You can donate by visiting the link at rochesterfirst.com. The two-day air show wrapped up last night. The headliners over the weekend, the Thunderbirds, who zipped through the skies for the final performance. See the crowds there lining, waiting to watch them take off. Monroe County was picked as one of 34 communities to host the Air Force team. The event brought other exciting aerial performers to town, along with plenty of food and activities for families to enjoy. And yesterday, there's some questions about the weather Saturday, but it was just yeah. perfect. I was out there with my daughter. She just wanted to be in the bounce house on the yeah. slides. And uh, I'm sitting well, there watching. Who doesn't, who doesn't want to go to the bounce I know. House. I'm watching World War II airplanes fly around, <laughs> and she's just enjoying, but a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday, I didn't think was that bad. I heard I could no. hear them from my apartment the yeah. whole day, even though I was sitting there staring at the radar, hoping, don't do anything. Don't do yeah. anything. And. No, we, we got off pretty scot free, I think. Let the show go on. Yeah. And today shaping up to be nice, too. We've got a yeah. nice sunrise. 63 sunrise going well over the lake right now. I kind of wish I was there. It actually looks beautiful out there right now. Next 24 hours, we'll see temperatures rise. Mid-70s today, we'll see some rain begin to make its way in. Late tonight, though, that's going to be from our next system sitting off to our west right now. Rain could be heavy tomorrow morning. That'll be one thing to keep an eye out for. Your eight-day forecast not looking that bad either. We'll see temperatures rise later on this week. All right, thank you, Liam. That will do it for us here at Sunrise CBS Mornings. Coming up next, we'll see you back here for a cut-in at 725. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.